Anthony Sequera here with stormwindlive.com and it seems like one of the areas of questions I get more than any other area from our CLN students is regarding spanning tree protocol. Specifically, it's spanning tree protocol at the CCNA level. Just what do we need to know about this very important layer two protocol for the Cisco Certified Network Associate exam? Well, let me go ahead and help you out with that in this CLN video. And I wanna go ahead and really make sure initially you realize that spanning tree protocol is to protect your layer two infrastructure from disaster if you have redundancy. Now I know what you're thinking, redundancy? That's an awesome thing. I love to be redundant and I love redundancy in my network. How many more times can I say redundant? But here's the deal. Even though we love redundancy, we're gonna wanna make sure there's always a way, multiple ways that is, to get from point A to point B in our network infrastructure. From a layer two perspective, we have to be really careful about this redundant infrastructure. Think about how broadcasts work. Do you remember how broadcasts work? On a transparent switch, that switch is gonna take in a broadcast frame and by default, it's gonna flood it out every single port of the switch, every single port that's in the same VLAN. And for simplicity here, let's just talk about a single VLAN environment. So here is the transparent switch doing what it does best with the broadcasts, flooding it out those ports. Sure enough, in a redundant type of topology, that would cause immediate chaos. What do I mean by chaos? I mean a broadcast storm. This broadcast storm, this flooding of the broadcast segments brings that particular network segment to its knees, folks. So it's a really, really ugly thing. This is where spanning tree protocol is gonna come into the equation for us. Spanning tree protocol is going to intelligently block a particular port of the topology so we don't have the looping traffic that results. Notice this particular port that gets blocked, it's not like the port is disabled, it's not like the port is shut down, it's just intelligently blocked from sending traffic so we don't have this devastating loop condition. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, okay, so from the CCNA level, I get it. We want redundancy, but redundancy with our switches can cause disaster. Spanning tree protocol, it's not a motor oil, but it is a protocol that will help us block traffic so we don't have the disaster. All right. I want to know a little bit more though. That's probably going to cover me for the exams, but I'd like to know a little bit more. Well, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit more about this very important protocol. How does spanning tree protocol go about this job of making the topology loop free? Well, let me go ahead and show you. This is so cool. It's four steps. Now again, this might go a bit beyond CCNA, but let's do it. It's not hard. All right, step one of this process, there is a king of the hill that is elected. One of your switches is gonna be elected what we call the root, the king of the hill, woohoo! And then your other switches, notice we like to call them bridges in spanning tree topology, technology, terminology, that's the right T word. We like to call them bridges because, oh, this goes back a while, the spanning tree protocol, and that's the terminology they were using then. Okay, so we've got our king of the hill to root. That's step one. The next step of this process says, let's come up with what we call a root port, one root port on every single one of the non-root bridges. That will be forwarding traffic. All right, cool. So we have the first port that's been elected as this forwarding port on this non-root bridge. Then the spanning tree protocol says, let's have a designated port on each and every segment. It'll also be forwarding traffic. And notice that by definition on the route, everything will be designated. 
All ports on the root device are designated. So now they're all forwarding. And now the last step of the process, anything that's left over will call non-designated and will be blocking. So this is the four step process that spanning tree protocol is doing for us behind the scenes. What a wonderful protocol. Well, we go about our day having long lunches and chatting and just having a splendid, oh, lazy afternoon spanning tree protocols in our network like this workhorse doing this. And guess what happens, folks? If a portion of this network were to change, like a particular link were to fail, spanning tree protocol goes to work and reconverges the network on a new loop-free technology or topology. I'm really having trouble with my T words today. So folks, that's everything I want you to know about spanning tree protocol. This is the meat for your CCNA level certification. So thank you so much for joining me in this CLN video. Uh, got a lot of requests to, to go over spanning tree protocol. Email me at anthony at stormwind.com. Anthony at stormwind.com. If there's any details of this you'd like me to elaborate on further, I'd be happy to. If you want to join us for a complimentary live event, we'd love to have you. Just uh, check out this page. It's stormwindlive.com and then sneak peek. You can see the URL right up here. I'll highlight that URL and uh, join us for a complimentary live event at stormwindlive.com forward slash sneak peek for all of the details. It's uh, like I said, I'm live class. It's an hour long. I'll be your instructor. There'll be lots of guest experts stopping by. So come on and get registered for this if you like. Complimentary and you'll be able to ask me questions live right there in the event. Thanks so much everyone up at the CLN. Great, great sharing some of this with you. And again, email me or contact me via the CLN if there's any special requests that I can do for you. Thanks again, everybody.